Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This is gonna be my new Marvel Fantastic Four teaser trailer video for the stuff that they dropped earlier. They dropped a bunch of Marvel Phase Four trailers and there's a bunch of Fantastic Four stuff in there. No surprise because it's gonna be a really big deal in a couple years. So we'll break it all down. There's a bunch of big Marvel stuff starting with WandaVision episodes in a couple weeks. I will be doing videos for all those episodes, so be sure to subscribe to get all those. And there's supposed to be some special Marvel Phase 4 trailer event on New Year's Eve in a couple of days, December 31st. So whatever footage that they release, of course I'll do videos for that too. But most of you probably saw Kevin Feige and Marvel recently released this teaser trailer for the new Marvel Fantastic Four reboot movie. And finally, I'm happy to announce a film about one of the truly iconic Marvel families. In fact, Marvel's first family, Fantastic Four. We're working on a feature now, and it will be directed by the director of our recent Spider-Man films, John Watts. We've got a lot in store at Marvel Studios, and Disney Plus is key to the interconnection and expansion of the MCU. It will be home for both our feature films and our series for years and years to come. One of the things I think people missed when he was announcing that Fantastic Four movie is that he said that Disney Plus would obviously be key to setting all that stuff up. That includes the new version of the Fantastic Four. So that'll all play out during some of these early Marvel Phase Four series like I'll talk about during this video. But he also announces that John Watts, director of the Spider-Man movies, is going to be doing the movie, currently finishing Spider-Man 3 with Tom Holland right now. And if the news is to be believed, Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire, and every person who's ever been in a Spider-Man movie ever. It literally seems like everybody who's ever even whispered the words Spider-Man is getting a cameo in that movie. But after they release Spider-Man 3 in December 2021, that's when John Watts will start working on the new Marvel Fantastic Four movie, which means we'll probably be watching it by spring 2023. But as a lot of you have seen, there have already been a lot of big Marvel Phase 4 Easter eggs and teasers for the Fantastic Four. We just saw a bunch of new ones in the new Marvel Phase 4 trailers they released a couple weeks ago. Marvel's kind of doing the same thing that they did with the Infinity Saga movies, setting up the Infinity Stones and Thanos in the background years and years before you ever actually saw them in a legit movie. Like we got a little teaser for Thanos at the end of the first Avengers movie, but he didn't actually show up as a real character in a movie till Guardians of the Galaxy. The biggest Fantastic Four Easter eggs so far start with Spider-Man Far From Home, so no big surprise that the director of the new Fantastic Four movie would have baked in some references to one of his upcoming projects, knowing that he'd be doing the reboot movie once they finish the MCU Spider-Man trilogy. And just to be clear, just because John Watts is moving on from Spider-Man after Spider-Man 3, that doesn't mean it's the end of Tom Holland's Spider-Man in the MCU. So even if they don't do legit Spider-Man 4 in the MCU, Tom Holland will still show up in Avengers 5, show up in other people's movies, but that he also might come back for a cameo in the new Fantastic Four movie because he'd been working with John Watts for so many years now. Everyone cue the hype train for the bombastic Bagman in the MCU now. But the first three big Fantastic Four Easter eggs in Spider-Man Far From Home all happen in rapid succession right at the end of the movie when Spider-Man swings down to the newly redesigned Avengers Tower. Ever since they released that movie 84 years ago, people have been wondering what they're going to do with the Avengers Tower now that somebody else bought it from Iron Man. Would it be Norman Osborn and Oscorp who bought it because this is all happening in a Spider-Man movie? Would it be Black Panther because he's one of the only other people in the MCU that has that kind of money to throw around? Or would it be Reed Richards and the Future Foundation? I think we can probably say long term, regardless of who owns it right now, for the next couple of years, eventually it will probably become the new Baxter building. Because Kevin Feige is a huge Fantastic Four fan and he said that they're doing everything that they can at Marvel to ensure that the new movies with the Fantastic Four will bring them up to the level that they deserve as Marvel's first family. And one of the ways you do that is you give them this iconic landmark that used to represent the Avengers, one of the biggest teams in the MCU. So the Fantastic Four now seems like the new biggest team in the MCU before Avengers 5 comes along. This sort of continuing this theme of setting up the Fantastic Four, the next big Easter egg is the construction sign. So when he swings down, you see the one, two, three, and question mark instead of the four with the different colors. The text reads, we can't wait to show you what comes next. Obviously, that's a reference to a bunch of different things in Marvel Phase 4. It's a reference to Marvel Phase 4 itself, like we can't wait to show you all the new movies and Disney Plus Avengers spinoff series that we're doing right now. But as you probably spotted, the four numbers and the colors of the numbers also correspond to the power sets of the Fantastic Four. So the one is red, represents Human Torch. The two, yellow, represents the thing. Three, blue, Mr. Fantastic. And the reason why you don't see the four, it's a question mark, is because it's meant to represent the invisible woman. It's invisible, so you can't see the four. 
Then the last little Easter egg here is when he swings down and they stand on the street corner here at the intersection of East 41st and Library Way. That's actually near Yancey Street in the comics, where the comic book version of the Baxter Building resides. Then the next big Fantastic Four Easter eggs and teasers that we see are in the Marvel Phase 4 trailers that they also release at this big Disney event, mostly for Kang the Conqueror, one of the MCU's upcoming bigger time travel villains. He's big enough to be a Thanos level threat, but because they're introducing him so soon, I don't think he's going to be the next Thanos. And in the role of Kang the Conqueror, we have a great actor, Jonathan Majors. MCU Kang the Conqueror is being played by Jonathan Majors, who you may remember from Lovecraft County. He's an amazing actor, so I'm really excited to see what they do with this version of the character. He's going to be the main villain of Ant-Man 3, Quantum Mania. He's a big Young Avengers villain too, so because they totally recast Cassie Lang with Catherine Newton, a bigger actress, a lot of people, myself included, think that it's because they're slowly putting together a Young Avengers team across all the new Marvel Phase 4 younger characters in the Disney Plus series. But the big connection between Kang and the Fantastic Four is that Kang is a time traveler from the very, very distant future and his real name, before he started calling himself Kang, was Nathaniel Richards, a distant descendant of Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic. We actually got the news that he was going to be Kang before they announced their new Fantastic Four movie officially, so we just felt like this was all leading towards Fantastic Four eventually anyway. You mess with time, it tends to mess back. You'll see. Famous almost last words from Iron Man during Avengers Endgame, so you can kind of see how they're sort of leading into Kang being another big villain coming up, and more Fantastic Four Easter eggs. The Avengers start messing with the quantum realm, quantum energy, time travel, alternate realities. Kang is the other side of that. That's why they're using him as the main villain for Ant-Man 3. But the next big Fantastic Four Easter egg is that Ant-Man 3 isn't going to be the first time that we hear about Kang the Conqueror. We're actually supposed to get our first taste of that during the Loki series in May when they start releasing those episodes. Loki from Avengers Endgame steals the Tesseract, the Space Stone, and winds up getting caught by the Time Variance Authority. They're kind of like the Time Masters of the MCU, the Time Cops, the Time Lords. Make all the references you want. He's forced to go hunt down and stop alternate versions of himself, other Lokis, from other timelines, alternate realities, from wreaking havoc on time itself. The one common denominator across all the trailers that you see is that in these different scenes, it seems like the Earth becomes a wasteland, completely destroyed. So the idea is that these other Lokis are messing with time in alternate realities, and whatever they do leads to the utter destruction of the Earth. Because of course it would, we're talking about Loki here, putting him in charge is literally the worst thing you could possibly do. So you wind up with this funny situation where Loki is both the hero and the villain of his series. But the Time Variance Authority monitors all time travel, all timelines in existence in the multiverse, so they clock time travel villains like Kang the Conqueror. Kang wears different faces across different timelines. You see three very Kang-like faces in the judge's chamber here up in the top carved into the wood. So we'll just get more early Kang the Conqueror in the Loki series, helping set him up so that everyone knows who he is when he shows up in Ant-Man 3 further down the road, and that'll be more of a lead-in for Fantastic Four. Like I said, Infinity Saga, teasing the Infinity Stones, eventually Thanos, and then giving us full Infinity Gauntlet. I don't know if he's actually supposed to appear on screen during the Loki series or if they'll just reference him, but the episodes will be here in May, so we won't have to wait very long to find out what's going on with that series. As for Fantastic Four casting news, Kevin Feige said a while ago that they hadn't started casting yet. They probably kind of have an idea of who they're looking at right now. As for John Krasinski and Emily Blunt, because there's been so much fan art of them as the Fantastic Four for the past couple of years, there are rumors that they'll have Marvel cameos, but the rumors are actually for Doctor Strange 2 Multiverse of Madness and that they'd be playing alternate versions of Captain America and Black Widow because once upon a time, way back during Marvel Phase 1, they were both almost cast as those characters before they got married to each other. John Krasinski wound up losing out on the role to Chris Evans, and Emily Blunt actually turned down the Black Widow role in Iron Man 2, and then that's when Marvel went to Scarlett Johansson. Having a big audience for you must be a cool thing. Good for yeah, you. Yeah, I'm excited. Good for I'm you. Excited. You made it, Chris. We'll see how it goes. You know, <laughs> fingers crossed. Everyone let me know in the comments, who do you want to play the new version of the Fantastic Four? All the Marvel WandaVision episodes are going to start in a couple weeks. Of course, I'll be doing videos for that, so make sure you have alerts enabled for my channel so you don't miss any of those. There's also going to be two prequel episodes next week for a series called Marvel Legends for them. I don't know exactly what that's going to be, but of course I'll do videos for it, so there'll be two episodes of that. Then the week after that is when WandaVision Episode 1 starts. Everyone click here for my full Loki trailer video and Easter eggs, and click here for my new Mandalorian Season 3 Luke Skywalker video. 
Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.